Yes. Uh, and so let me recap just a few things. Uh, yesterday uh, at the very, very end of class, we were we were looking at um, how to create the, uh, the final stairwell, which I did like more of a um, arc stairwell. Um, and then I added the railing around that staircase. And we just did that using, obviously, the railing command, which is on the architecture tab uh, right next to stairs. Um, and one of the things that you guys should look at while you're doing this is just look at the other buttons. You're not really required to use them right now, but you know you have ramps, uh, modeling lines. This is literally just kind of um, drawing in 3D. It, it, it's not... Um, it's not going to be 3D objects. It's just going to be 3D line work. So, so think of this more like SketchUp would be where you're just drawing things. Um, and then we're going to get into components and things like that. So quite simply, uh, one of the things that I wanted to go over real quick was down on the uh, view bar at the bottom. We, we have some features that, that I've briefly talked about. But I want to talk about them a little bit deeper this morning. Uh, I'm not going to go too deep. Um, again, you guys can take some notes and things like that uh, as we need it. But um first thing I want to point to is this little scale. So if you can refer back to your, your architectural scales that you had, you had some um, like eighth inch equals a foot, quarter inch, you know, you had all those fractions on that triangular scale. Well, realistically, this is just a, a fancy version of that. And so uh, what we do is we, we, we think about what we want our output to be. So when we were drawing in, when we were drawing our, um, uh, um, um, our chipboard vocab, we knew what scale it was going to be. It was going to be one to one. That's what we were going to print it as. Or the, um, the axos that we were drawing, we drew them at like a half inch equals a foot or a half inch equals an inch. So we, we reduced it. So we kind of got to know what we want our what, what we want our output to be. And so I'm just going to quickly show you how this works. Um, you guys can't see my screen. Okay. Bear with me for a second here. Ah, oh, sweet. Okay, hold on. I'll get you there. You guys in-house can see my um, screen, but you guys can't. So let's see what's going on here. How about that? You good? Okay, all right. So... All right, guys. So, so down here we're we're looking at um, we're looking at this first button down on the view bar, and and this gives us uh, whatever scale we're we're gonna print it at. So let me go to one of my lower level plans. So let's just say this was my lower level plan, which it is, and I wanna I wanna uh, get this thing ready to print. Okay. Um, there's a few things that I would have to do, but right here you see that I have this thing saying eighth inch equals a foot. Well, let's just pretend I don't want it to be an eighth inch equals a foot. I want it to be a quarter inch equals a foot. So I set that. And what you guys probably didn't notice was that the, the word up actually changed. So eighth inch means it's a smaller scale, which means we need to increase the size of the writing. Um, the quarter inch is, is a small or is a larger scale, which means we can shrink the size of the writing. I know that doesn't make a whole lot of sense. But if I click on eighth inch, You'll see that the, the text size increased. If I change it back to quarter inch, it um, drops it back down. Now, what, what is this actually doing? Um, this is really going to work with your annotation, with your text, uh, with your dimensionings and things like that. It just starts to prep the drawing to be, uh, be printed. We don't actually print from here. We actually print from a different spot. And so if I look here, I have a thing called sheets. So I'm not expecting you guys to do right now. I'm just kind of stepping you where we're going and why we need to learn these things. So right now I don't have any sheets made. So I'm going to say I want to make a new sheet. I'm going to use the, the default template, which is a 30 by 42 piece of paper. Um, there we go. We've got this very architecturally styled, um, we just call this a title block. You guys drew your own title blocks when we were doing this on paper. We had that border at the bottom where we were going to put in information. Some of us did, some of us we didn't. Um, but this is essentially what we're starting to create. So a title block can contain different things. 
so different drawings. So if I wanted my lower level to be shown on my title block, I could simply just drag this in. And you'll see here, it's a little bit big, but here, let me go back to this before I do that. Um, I can hit this little button that says Crop View, and this allows me um, this allows me to, to, to crop this thing down because I don't want to show quite as much as what I have. So I'm going to shrink this down and just show the floor plan. All right, so I've cropped the view. Um, I'm going to hide the crop region, but it is crop. So I'm going to go back to my I'm going to go back to my sheet again, and I'm going to drag my lower level plan in. And it still didn't work right. Let me try that one more time. All right. Hopefully. There we go. Okay. You're not doing this. I'm just kind of explaining why we're learning the settings. Because um, ultimately what it's going to do, it's going to get you to this level where you could pop things onto a drawing. So if you guys think about when we lined up our title blocks and we did a, we did a front view, we did a top view, we did a side view, and we did an axon. Um, what, what we're doing with this is we can actually drag in various views. So if I wanted a 3D view, there it is. Uh, and this could be an AXO, right? This could be an isometric view. This could be a camera view. This could be any sort of view I want. If I came to, um, say, my lower level plan and I went into view, and again, guys, I'm not asking you guys to do this. I'm just asking, I'm just trying to show you what we can do with this. I'm going to go into 3D view, but I'm going to actually make it a camera. And I'm going to take a camera and kind of point it at the step. And so now I've got an interior view of my of my project, and I can shade it. It's a little dark because I don't have any windows or openings. But what's neat is on my on my sheet of paper, I'm going to delete this 3D view because that's kind of a bad view. But I'm going to pop in this um, camera view, and I'm just going to put it here. And you'll see here now on my one sheet of, on my one drawing, I now have my my floor plan. And I have this interior view. And it didn't take much for me to do that, right? I literally drew a camera. Um, now, I will tell you, this is really sloppy. I would actually rename this, right? So you come in here, the rename, and you would say, like, you know, you figure out a naming convention that works. So, like, lower level stair corner. Okay? And once you have it typed in, you'll see here, it actually renamed this to correspond with the view name what i do again guys i actually make these things make sense while i'm doing working drawings and then right at the end i go in here and i change these names uh, because it's sloppy to say ll stair corner um it's also sloppy to have a zero here right so eventually what i do is i come back here i'm going to actually take off that. And it says, do you want to rename everything? Yes. And see, it cleans it up, right? Now, remember what I was saying was now this is out of order. So again, I use it as a tool. To help me um, things organize over my project browser. And right towards the end, I just take five minutes and rename the things so that all the drawings look a lot nicer. It just makes more sense because I spend a large amount of time working and a very few, very little amount of time actually like quote unquote printing or prepping. Uh, so, so I change these at the very last minute. So, as you can see, just by creating a camera, I was able to add that to my sheet quite simply by just dragging it in, and it works really, really well. So, that's the first thing that I wanted to share with you guys down on this little uh, section down here. Um, we have, the next thing was obviously our, our level of detail. So, we have coarse, medium, and fine. I will tell you guys... I, I kind of keep this on medium almost exclusively. Um, I very, very, very rarely change it off of medium. I never change it to fine. Occasionally, I'll change it to coarse. Okay. Um, to show you again what this really does, I'm gonna, just going to go into the architecture tab. I'm just going to draw a wall. Um, actually, I'm going to find a, a really detailed wall. One of these other. Um, 
here we go, exterior, CMU on, blah, 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 blah. And I'm just going to draw a wall right here. And you can see here, it's fairly detailed. It got a lot of lines in here. It shows me a lot of layers. If I change this off of, right, let me change it to fine, and I'm going to show you what happened. Y'all see that? Y'all see what happened? Y'all didn't see what happened? Let me do it again. Let me change it to medium. Okay, and let me change it to fine. I see it? You didn't see it? Neither did I. Okay. Because virtually nothing changes. I've never seen it actually change anything that made any significant difference. What it actually changed was something that we couldn't see because it was so small. There's probably more than one layer in one of these spots. And it turned a second overlapping layer on. It virtually makes no difference. With the exception of it slows your computer down significantly. So, keep it on medium. It's a good spot. If you're finding yourself, you don't need to see all this detail. You can because you guys are obviously going to see a difference between this and course. Right? You guys obviously seen a difference. Um, so I'm going to change that back to medium. There we go. Uh, and then the next one, we've already done this, but this uh shaded one, right? So we have wireframe, um, we have hidden line, which is what normally is what we keep on in a floor plan. When we look at this thing in 3D, we, we tend to flip one pretty often we go between wireframe right because sometimes we need to be able to grab something right so we might need to be able to grab um I want, might want to grab this floor this, this first floor deck so i can grab that with a wireframe uh what's what's interesting is is if i have this on shaded i can't grab it it's, it's hard to it's hard to get there um I'm going to skip a few of these other ones, right? We got Sun Path, um, Shadows. If you turn Shadows on, your computer will drastically slow down. Uh, but it does add shadows to your building that, that you update as you rotate. The sun's in one spot always, which is nowhere near to be true. But you guys get the idea. It just helps you with some shading, right? Um, I very rarely turn that on. Um, this is rendering, so so this is how we start turning into uh, photorealistic. So this little box will pop up, and it'll say, what do you want to render? You can kind of just say, well, what's on the screen? I'm, I'm okay with that, and I want it to be on, right now, just draft setting. And I can simply hit render. And what this does is this does like a, um, you know, Disney animated movies, right? It started, starts applying lighting and material and things like that. I don't have any materials applied i don't have any lighting applied i don't have shadows turned on so it's not going to look very it's not going to look very good but believe it or not this is this is rendered and so now this is an image that you can kind of start to see like it loses let me go to my um camera view so i have this here and i'm going to hit the render box which is this little teapot and again, I only have it on draft mode. You can increase the quality. But you can see here, it absolutely looks beautiful, doesn't it, guys? Looks beautiful. Why does it look so dark? There's no light, right? I don't have interior lights and I don't have any windows. So this thing accurately um, picks the lighting. So if I come to if I come to the lower level and I say, you know what, let me add a window in here. And then I go back to the same view. I hit my render button. Again, it's the teapot. I still have it on draft quality, which is literally just to get you an idea. It's not to make it, this would not be a printable. Um, and we can see here it's beautiful again, right? Now, one of the things that you look at here, I only did exterior, so I got to change this to interior. And I'm going to hit re-render. And you'll see it should change it a little bit. This a second. Da, 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 da. there's all it's picking up right so that's all the light is gathering you can see that's starting to look a little more realistic right you add interior lights you add a lamp you add all those things all of those lights turn on inside of your building uh it'll give you a much more realistic rendering additionally as you start to add material on the walls paint material um if you added trim along the base if you added carpet on the floor all of those things would start to render and have textures and colors and things like that. Um, these guys can see it, but if you guys can see that kitchen rendering right here, back 
actually done on the computer, right? It looks like a photo from where you're sitting probably. Um, that's just done in one of these programs as a, as a quick render. What's that? That's actually a, that for a guy up the street here, a little house. He needed his kitchen remodeled. So um, anyway, so we have that little teapot down here. And then the only other one that I'm going to touch on real quick, uh, and this is a very important one. Um, you can see here I have this like uh, very teal box that says temporary hide slash isolate. It's because I actually have my roof hidden right now. And I do that with the sunglasses. So I can say re remove temporary hides. And I'm going to show you how I hit it. I simply clicked on it. I clicked on the sunglasses and I said hide element. And then that little teal box popped up. And then what I could do is I could actually grab this. Is that? Oh, I thought you said that. So I'm going to grab this second floor. And I'm going to go back down here and I'm going to say hide element again. And you'll see there, now I could actually see my staircase. I got rid of the floor. Then again, I could kind of come down here and I'm going to say, I want to hide this floor too. So I just click on the floor. I click on my little sunglasses. I hit hide element. And now I've basically turned off all of my floors. That makes it a little hard to see, right? So I'm going to reset that. I'm actually going to show you what I do quite often. I actually will grab a wall or multiple walls. Then I'll hit my hide element. And I'll grab another wall and I'll say hide element. And now what I got is I, I can kind of view inside of my building and, and make changes, if that makes sense, right? And it didn't delete the wall, it simply just hid the wall temporarily. Again, to get it back, I can just hit reset view. And I'm good to go. So those are those are virtually all the settings that you're gonna worry about for now. There are some other ones down there that you'll Eventually, you'll do something. You go, Mr. Walker, how do I do this? Um, I'll explain it to you. You'll go down there. You'll be good to go. You'll figure it out. So it, it, it's, it's pretty... The rest of these aren't really that important right now. So as long as we're good with all of that, where you guys should be on this project is um, kind of sort of where I'm at, in a sense, right? Minus the window, right? So you guys should have this cube. It should have all the floors. Um, it should have staircase from lower level to first level um it should have um staircase from from entry level up to um the upper level and then you should have also cut the holes in the floor so that should basically be where we're at at this point so i'm going to show you guys two more things and i'm going to talk to you guys about where you guys are heading next so i'm going to go back to my lower level um, start talking about a few more things. So one, Windows. Okay, if we click on Windows, we have an option in here to select different types of Windows. So what I want you guys to do is just go ahead and hit the Architecture tab, hit the Windows button, and what I want you to do is on your lower level, your lower level plan, I want you to put in one fixed window, one window casement double one window double hung okay so you're going to put in one of each of the three types of windows i don't care what size i don't care what location it really doesn't matter to me you're just grabbing one of each of these windows and you're going to pop one of each of these in okay what you guys should have is something that looks like this. Uh, you guys may not have that, um, I don't know, do you guys have that double hung down bottom? You do? Okay. So you'll just pop one of each of those in. Uh, any size, I don't care, Elijah, and you're going to do one fixed, one uh, casement double, and one double hung. So just one of all, one of each of the three types of windows.
And then I'm going to call on somebody that I think can I think most of you guys can accomplish this next step, but I'm going to call on somebody in the virtual audience to step me through. So you're just going to tell me what to do with my mouse, and I will do it on screen. Uh, let's see here. Eeny, meeny, mighty, mo. I choose uh, Maureen. All right. Help me out, Maureen. You there? She's not. She's awake. Is she awake? This is the virtual teaching part. That's hard. Oh, I'm cutting out. Uh oh, Maureen, can you hear me? Still cutting out. I'm good now. Okay. All right. Let's see here. Any, anybody want to volunteer? I know you don't know what you're volunteering for, but you're going to help me out anyways because I think you can do it. All right. Let's go. Let me go, Ashley. You got me, Ashley? Yeah, okay. All right. Let's give it a shot. So we, uh, we, we've placed in one window of each type. So what I want to do now is I want to I, I want a fixed window, but I want a window size that doesn't exist, right? Because in the list I got a 1624, 1648, so on and so forth. I want a 4848. So how how do you think you would go about creating a 4848 fixed window? Um, what's the edit type button? All right, hold on a second. Let me turn up my volume here so the guys here in house can hear you. Oh. Hold on. Uh, there we go. All right, so she said uh, push the edit type video. So the first thing, one little step that you missed, and it's not a big deal. But I got to click on one of the other sizes, right? One of the fixed windows in the right type. It said so click edit type. What am I going to do? Um, for the height, you change, wait, what was the size that you wanted? I want a 48 by 48. Okay, yeah, so you put in four feet by four feet for the height and the width. Just do it here, you think? That sounds good to you? Am I missing any steps? Can anybody tell me am I missing oh, a step? The duplicate thingy. There we go, duplicate. And what am I going to name this one? Uh, Micro Living Fitted... I Window. I, I, I'm just going to go 48 inch X 48 inch. You you got it, right? So I'm just going to hit OK. And you said I need to change my height to 44 feet. And I need to change my width to 4 feet. And then there's some other settings here, right? Like sill height, you know, blah, blah, blah. I'm not going to mess with any of that right now. But let's congratulate Ashley. She got me through it. That was it. And essentially what I'm going to do is I'm just going to click and now I've got a window that's four foot by four foot. Okay. It's a custom window. We didn't have that size before. We simply hit the edit. We found, found one that was close. As Ashley stepped me through, we hit the edit uh, type button. We hit the duplicate button. As you guys can see, this isn't like, it's very consistent, which I think is what's really cool about Revit is windows are the same as doing walls as the same as doing everything else so uh, floors ceilings all of it's kind of done the same way so thank you very much um so now we have, now we know how to do windows uh let's step through this a little bit more i'm going to click on let me get back out i'm going to click back on windows now you guys i'm certain know that there are more types of windows than these three, right? We've got fixed, we've got basements, and we've got double hung. There are a large variety of windows. There's windows that have arches on the top. There's um, single hung windows. There's fixed transoms. There's side lights along doors, right? There's, there's all of these, I have books over here that are full of just window types, right? So, what I can do is, by default, Revit only has these, these three types. But here is what you guys need to remember. And this is kind of a little bit tricky because you, you'll, you'll mess this up a couple times. If you're in a 
particular category. I'm in Windows right now. If I hit this button that says Load Family, Revit has a bunch of stuff that I can utilize. So if I scroll down in this list, I can go down to Windows. And if I look at this, I've got a curtain wall awning. I've got, I've got, I've got, right? I've got skylights. I've got awning windows. I've got double casements, round top double casements. I've got, right? So I have all of these various types of windows that are um, built into, not built, they are, they're built in the Revit in the sense of they provide them to you. You just have to load them, right? So let's say I wanted to add this octagonal window. I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. Over in my new list, I'm going to have an octagonal window. And there's, you know, four different sizes. I got a 60 inch by 60 inch octagonal window, and that's where I want to put it, right? This house is getting uglier by the second, but we're getting the idea, right? So, um, we're able to modify that. We're able to just pop that in. We're able to edit type on this. We're able to say, I want to copy and duplicate this and make a 47 inch by 47 inch. And I could come in here and I could change those dimensions, right? And Revit will just recreate that window. Now, again, repeat that. I wanted to add a new window, so I had to be in the window. Hold on. Back. I had to be in the window command. I've got to hit load family. And then, then I can browse my windows that they gave me. Um, now, if I'm in architecture and I say, hey, I want to do doors. Well, if I look at this at default, the only door that they give me is a single flush. As you guys know, there's a ton of different doors available. So if I hit this load family button and I hit my little up button and I go back to, I don't know, probably going to find doors in the doors folder. And then I say, what kind of doors do I want? Uh, you know what? I want residential doors. Well, what do we got? We've got well, glass doors. We've got side lights, more side lights. You know, you got this arch top. We've got this flat glass. I really like this one. This one's beautiful. I'm going to go with this. And, okay, so specify types. I'm just going to hit OK. It's going to take a second. It's going to load this in. So now I've got, I've got this 30 by 80 inch door. Again, my house is getting prettier by the minute. We're just going to pop that door on the side, and what the heck, we're going to put another one over here, okay? So I can do that in 3D. It looks great. Or, more importantly, I could do this in a floor plan view. That's probably more likely where I'm going to be adding doors is in a floor plan view, right? So now I have a house that has 11 doors. You guys really are loving the architectural styling of the house. Uh, and if you guys notice, it actually put the doors in, even though the wall is still hidden. You can still see the doors, and we'd be able to see windows because the wall is hidden. Doors aren't, right? All right, so we're able to load in new things. Let me uh, let me step into one more thing here. I'm going to go to Chrome. And I'm going to think of, somebody throw me a furniture company out there. Ashley, okay. Um, Ashley Bim Objects. Ashley um, Furniture Bim Objects. Let's try it. All right. So, I just took a volunteer in the room here. She said Ashley. Um, and here we go. So, Bim is a, is a key word. I want you guys to all remember that. B I M. Okay, so if you want to jot that down or if you just want to try to remember that, um, and I'll just type that in the chat. It means building information modeling. It's basically that we're modeling a building using actual information. So I don't know if I got Ashley Furniture, but I got some BIM objects, okay? So I found this, this beautiful chair that I want to put into my project, and I can click on BIM. And some point I could find some uh, some download Revit files, right? So if I find 
the piece that I'm looking for, and I don't know what it is, it's this, right? So I'm using Revit 2021. I'm gonna download that. And if I look down here, I've got this, this um, it's now family, right? So what do I gotta do with this family? I've gotta take it from my downloads. So I'm just gonna hit view downloads. Okay, and now I can see that I have this. Um, I'm gonna say show in folder so I could actually get to the file. So here it is. And what I gotta do with this is, I gotta actually place that folder somewhere or I place that file somewhere. So the way that I'm gonna handle this is I'm actually just gonna say load family. I know I'm indoors, so it's not really gonna work. It's gonna work for my copy. So what I can do is, I can create a custom folder in this list. So I can come back here. And guys, this is where like programs get a little complex because you got to start worrying about file management. So I would create a custom folder here. And because we all, I, I know how computer naming works. Computers look at numbers first. So if I want something custom, I always want it at the top. So I'm going to say 000. zero, zero. And I'm just going to say my stuff for now okay and the reason why i did zero 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 is if i look at this list it's always going to be at the top of the list so i'm going to come in here and i'm going to make a new folder inside of here and i'm going to call it furniture all right good i could go deeper than that i'm not going to i'm going to open up that folder and what i'm going to do is i'm going to drag that file into that folder right so I just went on the internet, I found a chair that I like, I want to put in my model, and I loaded it into that folder. Now, because I'm in Windows, I'm in, not Windows operating system, but because I'm in the, I'm sorry, I'm in doors, in Revit, if I click on this, it's going to go, nah, dude, that's not a door. You're trying to load a door, and that's not a door. It knows that it's a piece of furniture. All right, so I'm just going to hit cancel on this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to back out to my to my home tab. And we want to put doors in, we put doors in. If we want to put windows in, we want to put windows in. If we just want to put components in, a piece of furniture is a component. I'm going to click on component and say, oh, you know what? Let me load. Well, what do I want to load? I, I'm backing up. I want to load my stuff. I want to load my furniture. And I want that really slick looking chair that I had, the, the waiting room chair. So there we go. I'm going to go to my lower level. And I'm just going to place a chair right here and right here. They look beautiful. Um, I'm going to uh, highlight this one and I'm going to do the old, uh, you know, Joanne Gaines, rotate the chair so that they look at each other. So you actually have to talk to the person that you're sitting next to. Okay. So now we're happy. Look, we got conversation chairs. And now let's look at this thing in 3D, right? Let's look at this thing in 3D with our beautiful octagonal window, perfectly placed, stellar architecture. But now we've got this, uh, we were able to go on the internet, simply download these chairs that I really liked. I saved them into my folder. From my folder, I was able to insert those into my model. I show you this because you guys are getting ready to do your whole houses in, in BIM, essentially, okay? You guys are gonna do your micro living houses. Um, you guys have all been to Home Depot or Lowe's? Everybody's at least been to Home Depot once or Lowe's? You guys ever walk past the kitchen department? What do they have set up there? Kitchens, right? They have little fake kitchens sitting everywhere, right? Well, believe it or not, you can actually download all of their kitchen cabinets. Like specifically, you could download their, their drawers. Uh, when you see the drawer base, you need to go. So I'll see you tomorrow. Um, Home, get your laptop. Uh, no, I'll see you on Thursday. All right. So you can download like the drawer base, the glass cabinet, the sink base, the blah, 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 blah. You can actually go in there and find all their different cabinets and, and place those into your BIM model. Um, and you can do really, um, you can do really elaborate, uh, models if you spend the time to find all of your components. Um, and there's websites out there. This is, I mean, you guys saw how I got here. All I did was I simply just typed in Ashley Furniture BIM Objects. I could type in kitchen cabinet. 
I will get them posted up on the announcements. So this is a second playlist called uh, Micro Living. So you might have still been on the. Now there's like four. Well, let me let me link let me link it in the thing and hopefully it'll work for you. Let me know tomorrow. One of the videos goes over the roof. I don't know if it was the first one. Okay, it might. I, I feel like they're in order from oldest to newest, so the newest is on the bottom of the playlist. Okay. All right, guys. See you all tomorrow. What's that? Okay, catch up. Use some time tomorrow. Oh, no, you, okay. All right. All right, see ya. Uh, sorry, guys. So, no, it's one of my seniors. Um, so, so as I look through this, right, I can actually go in here and I can say, oh, look, Merillette Cabinetry. So this is actually a pretty big company. Um, you can look here and go, oh, wow, I got all these different door styles. You know what? I really like, um, I don't know, I like this shaker door style. I don't know. I just pick one. Um, and I come in here and I can say, look, there's there's 182 downloads. So I could actually come in here and what do I want to download? I want to find the Revit family. And so you have to kind of read what these are. Um, and there's a bunch of various types, but I might be looking for just base cabinets so i can hit control f on my keyboard and type in base and i'm just going to hit enter a couple times until i see these down here right so i've got uh accessories base box i don't want accessories so i'm going to scroll down let's see if some more um so there we go there's a there's a base cabinet deep sink corner angle double door so that might be a decent one so that's probably just a double door base cabinet and then as you scroll through here, double door, um, angled, corner, whatever it is, right? So you guys can kind of see that there's a bunch of base cabinets. And, and if I wanted one of these, I just simply hit download. Uh, I think this program makes me log in. I think I have an account with these guys. But um, Uh, I'll figure it out. And what I do is I actually, um, I actually share my, pa I just give you guys my login and password so that you guys can utilize this website. If I already created an account, I, I got to remember what it is and, and I'll, I'll get it to you. Um, and you can utilize this to download various, um, various objects. And, Okay. All right. So um, that's where we're at today. Uh, realistically, uh, it, it's really just kind of learning what the, what some of the other features do. Um, what I'd like to see you guys do is literally just goof off with the model. And when I say goof off with it, put some doors, put some windows, um, don't really care where they're at. Um, the location of any of that stuff doesn't matter. Um, I also suggest trying to find out how to do a camera. Um, and quite simply, I didn't explain how to do that uh, too well, but it's under view, it's under 3D view. There's a camera button. Uh, and, and you gotta be on a floor plan to be able to do it. So I want it to be here. And then I'm gonna say, I want a camera. And if you look at this, um, as I drag my camera, there's actually settings over here on the camera, right? So where do I want to be? So if, if, say I had a couch there, what you can do is you can measure how high you are if you're sitting on a couch and it's a, it's about three foot two, right? And then where do I want to be looking, right? So, so once I change that, you'll see that my view got taken lower. And do I want to be looking, maybe I want to be looking up into that corner. So I want to be looking up at about seven feet or so. And so it'll it'll actually update the camera. You can change um, 
you can actually get into some pretty crazy stuff. You can actually change like um, what uh, uh, what millimeter the lens is. There's all that stuff, right? I can uncrop you, which means that it just goes out, in, you know, to infinity, which you never really want to do. You just want to crop it um, because you can change the crop window anyways. So um, it's all good stuff um, as far as like how, how Revit works. Uh, you can shrink these things in to make these views look a little bit nicer. And again, you'll you'll see these. Um, you know, let's render this just to see what this looks like. Uh, what did I do? Hang on a second. I moved my camera somehow. Hang on a second. Oh, well. I don't know what I did. I don't know what I did with my camera. I moved it somehow. So uh, let me go back to my lower level. Let me shoot another camera. Eight foot two. Seven foot. Stretch this out just a little bit. And I'm going to hit my little teapot. I'm going to change this to a little bit of a higher quality interior. Um, and what this does is it actually um, kind of uploads it. It takes a second because it's trying to ray trace. It's trying to um, retrace where all the, the so where all the light bounces essentially. Um, the virtual machines are a little slow at rendering. It is what it is. We can we can deal with it. Um, but I think what you guys will see here is wasn't that great? What was that render dialog and it went away? Um, bear with me for one more second. Let me hit redo on that. I forgot to click a button, so I'll show you this in a second. And once it's done, I'm actually going to do the adjust exposure. I'm going to brighten it up just a little bit because for some reason Revit's always a little, always a little dark. Um, it's just one of the things that I don't think they do very well. All right, I'll leave it there. And then there's this little button that says save to project. I'm just going to call this render one for now. Okay. And if I look under here, you're going to find something in here that says renderings. And then I can double click on this. And you guys can see I didn't change the detail level very high. It's still very low. But I think you guys can start to understand that, that it does a pretty darn good job. I don't have any materials associated with it, right? Like the, the furniture had its materials associated with it. And, and honestly, if you look at it, they're the best things in the uh, in the rendering as far as the appearance. Like I don't have tile or hardwood called out on the floor. If I did, it would look nicer. If I had the walls painted the right color and the ceiling painted the right color. I think what you guys will look at here is if you go home and look at, or well, you guys are at home, but if you look at your ceilings in your rooms, you really do get shadows like this coming in from windows. So it does a really good job at, at uh, lighting model. Um, you can do a bunch of other stuff. You can set where the sun's at. You can set the time of the day. There, there's, a, there's a whole bunch of things that you can do. Um, additionally, not that you guys need to get into it, but there is this thing called render in cloud. Um, and, and render in cloud is a um, is a feature that's built into oh shoot helps if I put an actual email address in there 
Um, I'm going to show you one of the ones that one of my students had done in the past. Um, rendering Cloud is essentially a you're using their computers to um, you're using their computers to render instead of using the local computer. And so what you can essentially do is it, when you hit render in cloud, it'll actually take your file, upload it to the internet, and then it'll do the rendering for you. So this was a, um, this was a really quick junk project that we did just to demo how to use Revit. You can see here, we can use like the, the panoramic type viewing. Um, and this, this works pretty well. You can see that the lighting looks really good coming in the windows. We brightened it up a little bit. Um, and this wasn't even rendered on, on my computer. This was rendered on this, um, this virtual machine somewhere else. And then what's really cool is that there's a little button here that says uh, Stereo Panoramic. And so what you can actually do is you can, uh, you can render this. It would actually create a uh, Google Cardboard file and you could use your, your phone in 3D and use a Google Cardboard or a set of uh, phone version VR glasses. And you could actually move your head around. Now, you can't walk physically through your building, but you could just move your head around on a pivot and look all around. So there's a lot of really cool things that we can do with Inside Revit. We're going to continue to um, we're gonna continue to play around with this. Um, we're going to... Um, there's another community center one of my kids was working on. This was just a practice thing. He was just doing some independent work. But again, you can kind of see, um, you know, you get, this is an old one. This was done like probably six years ago. But um, you get the idea, right? You start to understand how the textures and things like that work. So there's a ton of things that we're going to be able to do in Revit, but your rendering should be able to look like this at this point. Um, and we're just going to keep progressing. And then I'm going to talk to you guys on Thursday, essentially, how we're going to take Revit. You guys are going to start over and rebuild your, your floor plans in Revit and start actually making your micro living houses utilizing this program. So other than that, unless you guys have any questions, uh, you guys are good to go.